Well, good morning. Welcome to Daniel Online Worship Service today. I pray that you all are doing well. Blessed with the Lord Jesus. Had a great week in him. I am Pastor Keith, the pastor of Daniel Missionary Baptist Church here in Tuskegee, Alabama, where we're renewing, restoring, reviving one person, one family, one community at a time. Again, we'd like to welcome you this morning. We pray that you're excited about what God is going to do today, what he's going to say, and to expect God's very best. Amen? Because he can do it. He is the true and living God. There is no other God like our God. And I love him. I love him with everything that's within me because of the things that he has done for me, my family, and you all. I don't, have to, uh, I don't have to try to talk him up. I know the goodness of God. And he is a good God. So we thank you all again so much for uh, worshiping with us today at our 10 o'clock service. We just bless God on you all's behalf. Um, if you know somebody that uh, is not participating in the service, well, just give them a call and tell them, hey, we're on Facebook Live and YouTube because we just preach the true, unadulterated word of God. Nothing more and nothing less. Again, I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And as we begin ready to pray, I want every person, I just, Pastor Keith just don't have to pray. People can pray, you can pray as well. Think about somebody that needs Jesus. Think of somebody that's in a dark place and they need revival. Think of somebody that's hopeless and they need hope. As I'm praying, you lift those names up to God and you trust and believe in God on their behalf that their lives are going to be changed because there is power in prayer. There is power in agreement and we agree that the word of God will prevail in the lives of God's people. We saw last week as we preached um, out of Acts chapter 16 with a Philippian jailer. Because of the word of God, that jailer and his entire family was saved. So let's believe God's word will continue to save. It will. It's going to continue to save. But we got to get the gospel out. We got to tell people about Jesus. They're just not going to hear about themselves. They have to hear the preached word of God. So as we get ready to go in prayer, please join me and just lift up people that you may know, that you may work with, that you, uh, maybe your family members, someone that is not saved, that does not know Jesus, or they do know him, but they've walked away, or the relationship is not where it needs to be. The Bible says in 1 John 1 and 9 that uh, if we confess and repent of our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's give God the best amen we can, and let's go before him in prayer. Father, in the name amen. of Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment, O oh God, that your children, we, your children, come together as one, one body of believers, believing in one God, one Savior, one Holy Spirit. And we surrender ourselves to you this morning, O oh God. We give ourselves over to you right now in the name of Jesus. We say hallelujah to your name, O God. The highest praise that we can give your name out of our lips, O God. And we honor you this morning. We praise you this morning. We glorify your name. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who not counted not robbery to come on this earth to die on the cross for our sins, O God. And we thank you for him that we have eternal life through Christ Jesus, those that believe. And we thank you for it right now, Lord. If you didn't do one more thing for us, oh God, we've been blessed by you. And we thank you so much, Lord. Father, we together as a church and individually confess and repent of our sins. And we ask you to forgive us and cleanse us with the blood of Jesus from all unrighteousness, oh God. Everything that's in us that not like you be purged and burned away by the power of the Holy Spirit, the shed blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony, oh God, that we will be cleansed upright and right standing before you with a holy lifting up holy hands and a pure heart before you lord we thank you so much for baptizing us in the holy ghost with fire dressing us with the whole armor of you this morning oh god and sealing the armor around us with the blood of jesus that no weapon formed against us will prosper and every tongue that rises up against us in judgment will be condemned fall to the ground and life should not take root in our lives we thank you today, God, for catapulting us out into your will today as we intercede and pray on behalf of the lost. You said in your word that uh, that Jesus died for all. He gave him life, his life for all. 
So we pray for the world, oh God. Your world needs this salvation, oh God. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we, your children, are ready to go out into the harvest to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That those may hear, that will hear, will believe your word, accept Christ as their Savior, believe that he died, and believe you raised him from the dead to save them, to give them an eternal home with you in your kingdom, O oh God. And that you will raise them up in the midst of this harvest and teach them and shape them and make them and mold them into the men and women of God you created and called them to be so they can go out and share the good news as well, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the true and living God. There is no other God like you. There never has been and there never will be. We thank you for your love, your kindness. We thank you for your power through your Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us and unctions us and give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to understand your word and what you're calling us to do today, Lord. We just thank you for the lost, O oh God. And Father, we just pray for the poor and the widows, O oh God. You command your church to take care of the poor, the widows, and uh, and we just lift them up before you and we make mention of them before you, O oh God. That, Father, you would display your, your, lavish out your love, your compassion, your resources, O oh God that they will be blessed as well in Jesus' name. You have given the church us together resources and you have given us individually as families resources. They're your resources. We are just being stewards over them. And give us the wisdom, give us the grace, give us the love to be good stewards over the resources that you have given us that we can be a blessing to people that are in need, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we're your hand and your feet all over this world, touching and agreeing that your will be done in the hearts and minds of your people, O oh God. Father, we just pray for our leaders all over this world, wherever they may be. You commanded us in your word to pray over our leaders. We lift them up before you, Lord. We make mention of them before you, God. And we pray, Lord God, as we surrender them unto you, we pray that you would turn the heart of the king. And as people of old used to seek out your will through the prophets of God, that they would do the same. They will look out for men and women of God to see what God is saying, that they may be obedient to what he is saying, oh God. We just thank you for our country, Lord God, that our country will return to its knees in prayer as one, not divided, but we are together as one, trusting one God, that we will repent as a whole in Jesus' name and to receive your forgiveness, your blood, your transformation of the hearts and mind of your people in this country, that we will come together as one, believing in you, Lord God, that the gospel of Jesus Christ will transform all lives in this country, that this country will return back to a country of prayer, a country that loves God, not trying to expel God, but to bring him in, to usher him into all our business, Whatever we do, wherever we go, that we carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. We carry his spirit. We won't shut up. We won't be ashamed of who Jesus is. Regardless, if we have to stand by ourselves. We thank you for the right that we have to declare your name. So we thank you, Lord God, for this country, Lord God. We thank you for all our brothers and sisters in covenant relationship, Lord God, all over this world, oh God. We pray for them. Everybody that we've ever said that we will pray and intercede on their behalf, whatever the situation, the circumstances, we lift them up before you, O oh God. And we ask you to have your way. Move on their behalf. Whatever they're standing in need of, whatever they're believing you for, O oh God, we ask you to grant it according to your will for their lives. We just thank you for your church, your body, Lord God, all over this world. And we thank you for the body of Christ at Daniel, Lord. We ask you to continue to bless us to be a blessing. Our communities, our cities, our children, our schools, wherever they are, Lord God, we just thank you for blessing. And we just thank you for the word of God that will be preached today, Lord God. That will be pre preached with simplicity, understanding, and with power from the Holy Ghost that will transform the lives, not only my life, but the lives of the people that are listening today. That this word will be echoed all over, Lord God. We thank you for being so good to us, Jesus. We thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. We love you. We adore you. And it's in your name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Amen. Amen.
If you have your Bibles today, please turn with me to the gospel according to John. That's uh, John chapter 17. Uh, for you that may be new to the Bible, that is Matt, that's in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That's John chapter 17. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. We just want to give everyone a moment to get there. Again, that's John chapter 17. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. Then we're going to skip down to verse, verses 20 through 26. One more time. That is John chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. And verses 20 through 26. The word of the Lord reads, verse 1. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may be glorified you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Verse 4 says, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished this work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Verse 20 says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe me through your word, through their word, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me <clears throat> and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. Verse 23 says, I in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Thank God for his word this morning. We have a title today. The title is simply, Jesus has prayed for you. Uh, these two sections of scripture, we have read out of John chapter 17, verses 1 through 5, and verses 20 through 26. Uh, verses 1 through 5, Jesus prays for himself. He's lifted up, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes unto heaven. And said, Father, the hour has come. We know that in this text that Jesus is about to be crucified on the cross. One of the most horrific deaths that you can imagine. We know that uh, in scripture, the Bible says that uh, as Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the weight of sin, the weight of preparing to die was so heavy on him. They said that uh, blood, that sweat was dropping from his head like great drops of blood. He was in agony. He was in pain. He knew what he was about to go through. His flesh, his body didn't want to go through it, but his spirit overrode his flesh. He said, nevertheless, not my will, Father, but your will be done. Because he knew the Father's will was for Christ to die on that cross for the sins of all mankind. See, Jesus prayed for himself. That he is getting ready to return back unto the Father. And that he has given him eternal life to all that will believe. And that's what Jesus' prayer is for us today. We as believers, as non-believers, eternal life is returning back unto God. See, in the Garden of Eden where everything was perfect, before uh, Adam and Eve sinned, everything was perfect. Uh, Adam and Eve, they had perfect communion with God. They could go to and from his presence at any time. They walked with God in the coolness of the day. They communed with him. They had an a unfailing love towards God as he loved them. And he, uh, But as the enemy does, 
he came in and he fooled them. He tricked them. He took the keys from them, the very life source, the keys to eternal life. When they sinned in the garden, eternal life uh, ceased to exist in their life. They were separated from the love of God. They could not feel his presence anymore. God even walked in the garden. You can read this yourself in Genesis uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2. That uh, God, he came looking. He said, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, uh, we saw you coming, so we hear from you. We were naked. He said, who told you that he, you were naked? So when he told them that God knew that they had done something, he already knew it, that he had done, they had done something that they should not have done that separated them from the love of God. When Jesus returned back onto the earth to give us those keys back, See, when Jesus died on the cross and he went to hell, the Bible says that he took back the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Those keys are the gateway to eternal life, to return us back to our proper place in God. That's why Jesus is praying for all believers. He said, I do not pray for these alone, but God, Jesus prayed for all men to be saved. All men to be saved. He said in verse 20, I do not pray for those alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you. Father, are you, Father, are in me and I in you. Jesus wants us to be the same. He prayed it that, Father, as I am in you, that we also are in them, meaning God is in you. Jesus is in you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Once you surrender your life to Christ, God, Jesus has already prayed for you. That when you give your life to Jesus, the Bible said they will come and make a home inside of you. That is a magnificent word, but we've come so numb to the word of God that we don't really, do we really believe that God lives on the inside of us? The Bible said that he does. Why? He comes to make his home on the inside of us so he can lead us and guide us to be perfect in him to do the works that Christ did on the uh, in the earth so we can do the same thing as the disciples. That's why God created us. He created us to be in perfect union with him. And now in these last times that we're living in, we have so much evil in the world. We have so much chaos in the world. We have the, uh, the, uh, the lust for money, greed, power, uh, lust for things that has nothing to do with God. People are leaving from the very presence of God to do their own thing. I submit to you today that the enemy is doing the same thing he did in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's doing the same thing now. He's trying to take your eternal salvation and get you to walk away from it. So when the return of Jesus comes, you will go with him instead of having eternal life in Christ Jesus. See, the lust of the things of this world is temporary. These things are temporary. You heard me say this before. Houses, money, cars, all the things that we can ever imagine. Anything that the devil can show us, this stuff is temporary. I'm not saying that we can't have these things, but we should not allow these things to have us. Jesus said we should be perfect in him. That's what he prayed, that uh, God's glory will prevail through us. See, when Jesus came on the earth, he did not come to make a representation to make himself famous. He didn't do it. He did not try to make himself famous. Matter of fact, he didn't even want people to see him. He wanted people to see the Father through him that sent him. And that's why he's praying for us here now, that we are one with them, that the glory of God will be shown through us. His power will come through us that people may know that these are represent, representatives of the king, the only true and living God. So when people see us, they ought to know it's something different about us. It's not that we look different, but it's because of the anointing of God that's on our lives. I think I may have shared this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was watching a Billy Graham uh, crusade, and he gave this testimony about uh, one of his uh, granddaughters. Uh, this young lady, when she entered high school in the ninth grade, uh, she went in full-hearted, ready for school. She was standing for Jesus uh, all through high school, but people did not like her. 
They didn't like her because of her, uh, her, uh, her uh, relationship with God. They did not like her because she was not doing the same things that they were doing. She had no friends. People bullied her, but she still held her ground. She did. She may have been hurting on the inside, felt alone, but she did not move from her faith in God. And in her senior year, the, the very people that shunned her, that talked about her, they watched her and they came to her and said, you know what? Because of your faith, you did not move. Regardless, we watched you through all of school and that encouraged us. And she won them over. She was a leader, not a follower regardless of what price it had, she had to pay. And those children, those kids, they surrendered their life to God and they started a Bible study. We can do the same thing, but we have to love God with everything that's in us, just like Christ is talking about. Allow him to move through us. He never said that this walk was going to be easy. That's why he's continually praying for us, that we have to be an example to people that are around us. Everybody, you have your own level of influence at home with your family, on your jobs, at school, in the grocery store, people you play cards with, people you go to the races with. Wherever you go, you have a level of influence. And you are going to have to allow Christ to shine through you. You can't put on your church hat on Sundays and then take off and put on your race hat on Saturday or whatever card playing hat on um, Thursday. You're going to have to put on that hat of Christ and let it stay there all your life. We cannot be hypocrites of the word, live it one day, and then do what we want to do the rest of the time. No, that is not Christ-centered. Christ-centered is being the same every day, today and for the rest of your life, wherever you go. People may talk about you. People may say horrible things about you. People may despise you. But Jesus has already prayed for us. He has already told us that we're going to go through things. We're going to be persecuted for his name's sake. But do not grow weary in well-doing. If you faint not, God will restore you. He's right there in the fire with you. They're not saying these evil and nasty things to you. The enemy is using to try to break you, to try to come with them and do what they're doing, then to get you to walk away from God. But the God didn't call us to do that. He called us to stand. If we got to stand alone, and I guarantee you, if you stand for Jesus, people may say what they want to say, but at the end of the day, somebody's watching. And the persecution that you have received, uh, it, if one person gets saved because of the persecution that you went through, it was worth it for you to go through it. See, we don't think like that because we haven't been taught that, but we have to know that whatever we're going through is not us. It's not personal. It's against Christ, the person of Jesus that we believe in. Do not allow the enemy to do what he did to Adam and Eve to you. Jesus has died and given you eternal life. He has given you the keys back to eternal life to your father, your creator. That when we leave this earth, we have, we're going to have a union with God. We're going to have a most perfect relationship with God, the most glorious celebration that we can ever imagine. And it will, it will be for all eternity. The time we have here on earth cannot match the eternal life that we're going to have in Jesus. But we want to use our time wisely. Jesus prayed for us. Know in this text today that he prayed for us. He said, 22, and the glory which you gave me, I have given to them. He gave it to us so that glory would show through us. The very presence of God, the same spirit, the same glory that raised Jesus from the dead. God Almighty, he lives on the inside of us. Allow him to move you. Allow him to speak forth to you. Allow him to share the testimony of the goodness of Jesus. Whatever God has done for you, don't hide it from people. Share it. So people will know, man, if they went through this and God delivered them, he can do the same for me. But if we don't ever share with people what we've gone through and what God has delivered us from because we feel ashamed and we don't, we don't want to offend anybody, they don't mind offending you. They don't. People do not mind offending you, but when you want to share your faith about Jesus, oh, I'm offended. Get over that. People are going to get offended. They got offended when Jesus came on the scene. They're going to get offended because the name of Christ that you live, just get over it. It's not personal. 
because people need Jesus Christ. This world is in a turmoil. They need, the, they need Christ. And I'm almost done. Know that Jesus has prayed for you. And he declared in verse 20, and I have declared to them your name and would declare it and that the love which you have given them may be in them and us also. Jesus has given us everything that pertains to life. He said over in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, every spiritual blessings in heavenly places he has given us, we have to trust him for it. It is our blood bought right as a child of the king, as a, a king or a prince, princess, whatever you are, whatever God has called you to do, use your gifts for his kingdom. See, the devil wants to take the gifts that he has given us and exploit them and use them for the world's gain and then spit you out when you have nothing else to give. But see, God would never do that. That's the same thing that he did to Adam and Eve. Don't allow him to do that in your life any longer. Look past his lies. Look past the things that he has to offer you. They're only temporary. He's only using you to get his will done, but his will is never going to prosper over God. The devil time and his angels, fallen angels, are numbered. And when Jesus returns with judgment, they're on their way to hell. And they want as many of God's children to follow him as possible. So no longer follow the lies of the enemy. Open your heart to the truth of God's word that Jesus died for you. He loves you so much that God allowed him to die on a cross, an old wooden, a wooden rugged cross. He was beaten beyond recognition for you. He was pierced in his side for you. All of the weight of the world was placed on him for you. Every sin that was committed in this world from the beginning even up to the now was attached to his body. And when it's said and done, he nailed sin to the cross. He destroyed the works of the devil. He released you from uh, the sting of death that we didn't have to live a life of sin any longer. He did that for you and I on that cross. And when he that body died, it was buried in a borrowed tomb. And then he went to the hell to strip the devil from all authority that he has had and got the rightful keys and returned them back unto us. Those keys are the access that we have to eternal life. And he gave them back to us. And God, Jesus is now sitting on the right-hand side of the Father after God raised him from the dead, interceding for you and I. So when we go through something, he said, Father, I know what they're going through. I was tempted at all points what they were going through. Have mercy on them. Have compassion. That's what Jesus did for us. He just didn't do it one thing. He did at that time. But that salvation through his blood is eternity. And all we have to do is believe on his name. That's it. Believe on his name. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've said. I don't care where your family background come from. I don't care if you've ever, you've been told all your life, you will never amount to nothing. You will never be nothing. You're trash and that's what you're always going to be. The devil is a lie. The Bible says if you confess and repent of your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Believe on his name today. Know that Jesus has prayed for you before he died, and he's still praying for you right now. A living Savior sitting on the right-hand side of the Father for us to complete the work that he started. And when it is time for his return, that he has prepared an eternal home for you in his kingdom. That's what he has done for That's what he has prayed for us. And we as believers need to know it. We need to live it. And we need to give it to others. As freely as the gospel was given to us, freely we need to give it to somebody else. And let that cycle continue to roll out until it spreads like wildfire. That revival would break out all over this world. That God's presence would prevail over the enemy. I love each and every one of you. Know that God has, Jesus has prayed for you. He is still praying for you. 
and then we have to continue to pray for one another and pray for people in the world. They will come out of the world and come into the household of faith. That is your blood bought right as a child of the king. I love each and every one of you. And as we get ready to close in prayer, we thank you for listening today. We pray that you have been blessed. And even as I am praying, you pray as well. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you for your word today, God. Jesus, we thank that you have prayed for us. We thank you, Lord God, that your glory lives on the inside of us. It's not us that live, but you live in us and we show forth your glory. Give us the power, strength and knowledge and understanding wisdom to go out into the world to be a light in darkness that people will see and they will know that Jesus lives on the inside of them. And they want to know what must we do to be saved. And you give us the word in that season, in that hour to share with them that they will be saved. Not only them, but their family and their family's family, oh God. It is your will that all men be saved, Lord. And we just pray for the gospel of Jesus Christ continue to be preached all over this world, oh God. In every country, in every village, in every indigenous place, oh God, where it's impossible to get there. But we know that your gospel cannot be stopped. Just like John the Baptist preached in the wilderness, didn't move, but that gospel was heard all around in the surrounding areas. That, Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus today. We thank you for your saving power. Father, we ask you to bless your children, bless the people that are online today, Lord God. Bless their families, oh God. Give them uh, what they need, their supplies, what they need to go forth this week, oh God. Father, we just ask you, Lord God, to continue to woo your people, to, to call them unto yourself, to speak to their heart, that they may be obedient unto you, that you empower them, just like you empower Jesus, just like you empower the disciples, that your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And we pray for boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we will not be ashamed, that we will not be afraid, that we will shout it from the rooftop. Regardless of who says what, we love you, God, because you first loved us. And we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for this hour. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Again, I thank you all so much for joining us today here at Daniel Missionary Baptist Church Online. Please visit our website at www danielbaptist.org look at our web page you get more information about our church there we love you our supporters we thank you so much for supporting us for praying for us for being with us remember to pray for somebody remember our covenant brothers and sisters in kenya and peru and in your respective neighborhoods and cities where you we all always pray just not on sunday every day anytime you think about it pray I leave this with you. A man of God said uh, uh, years ago, I don't pray more than 15 minutes, but I do not go 15 minutes without praying. That should say something to you that we were always to pray. I love each and every one of you. You have a wonderful day in Jesus until the next time. Amen.